Welcome to another episode of Coding in AL and today we are going to look at the integer virtual table which can be used to loop through data items in reports. So a virtual table contains system information which cannot be changed and can only be read and it's computed at runtime. The most common ones that basically which I've used is the integer and the date virtual table. So stay tuned. I will create a new report using the AZL dev tools. They say AZ or AZ. So I'd like to call it, uh, let me say, the bank. I think I love banks. Is it because of money or what? And let me use the integer virtual table to display this particular bank report. That naming is purely off. And then the integer virtual table basically contains the number only. And we would like to use it to loop. Okay. So in the report, once we have defined, we need to say the layout, uh, RDLC layout. It's supposed to be layout. The default layout to be RDLC. And then the RDLC layout will be the, for, for my case, I have my folder known as report layout. And then I'll call it the bank report.rdlc which will be under this particular area report layout and then I'll build I'll build to be able to get this bank report and probably set this as the default launch in our VS code report to be that report and the report layout is here, which we will open externally to find ourselves in a blank uh, layout and insert a table that will display our single data item, which is the number. Once we do that, we'll just save and uh, probably close it and run this application but you know it will display so many items we just need to filter it to maybe let's say we can use this uh, maximum iterations to be five to limit it to five items and run this uh, particular report uh, by publishing it after signing in we'll have our report displayed which we can preview okay this didn't go on well. <laughs> did, it, did, it did the maximum iterations of five for negative this number to this, which is okay. This is the first number of this integer because the range of the integer is minus, is it one billion to positive that one billion. So it started with the first up to five. So it only did five iterations. The other way is to use maybe the data item table view where you define where the number will be a const maybe or a filter of say a range between one to 10, maybe something of the sort. And it will limit it to that particular range or five iterations within this particular filter and uh, have it uh, specified like that. Okay, let me just repeat this where number is equals to filter. Let me repeat this. We can have it at least having a number that is uh, a number that we can like. One, a number that starts with one, not negative a billion or something. So uh, this integer, we are saying that we can use it to loop through records. And we have started with the integer and we are calling our report the bank report for instance maybe we wanted to have a way of probably maybe printing 
this particular report five times or have it generated five times in a way. And inside this iteration, since we know that this is the first loop, what, what this does in terms of iterations is the first iteration will first go to on pre data item and then go to the on after get record of the first record of this integer and move to any child data item which we have as the bank account here and it will come to this bank account child data item and be able to add uh, records let me see if i can add multiple fields here we have the number then the name then the net change maybe you can have these three fields added so here we have our bank account so it means we will uh, the first record will display this integer then display the bank oh, five times before it goes to the next integer iteration so if we are to display this detail of the bank in our detail item, we will have the bank five times. Okay, we'll have the bank five times, but the integer will be repeated one, 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 and then, okay, let's just see. <laughs> Trying to describe something here. Uh, okay, so we'll, we'll build again so that we can have this uh, layout updated with the latest uh, values that we have added we open it externally again and add this bank account detail right here forgive the format of the report today it's weird i know very weird you're not even beautifying it bank account and then number but this one is no bank account and then the bank account name and then the net change. Okay, let's simplify the format to that. So what 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 will the number display when we do such a change? Again, I will build and publish. We do have our entry here as having ones, then twos for the same bank, starting with the gyro ending with WWB and moving on like that till the end. So we are like uh, repeating this display of this same bank account. Okay, what else can we do here? What if we group this particular report Okay, with the display showing that we have so many iterations of the number, <coughs> we can try and add a group here, a group for the number and be able to probably have it displayed differently. So we will add a parent group and we group it by the number so once we group it, we don't need this anymore. And uh, here in the group of the number, we can use the group properties and be able to set a page break between each instance of the group to be able to display the uh, each group separately and have it like say, I have printed this report how many times? Let's say five times or something. And I will again, Build and run. And preview the report. So we have the group number one as this. Then the group number two there, group number three and four and five. So we have used the integer to iterate this printing of this particular report into five pages. Let's go back and probably be able to change it to something different somewhere, 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 somewhere. 
Let's delete the group and see if we'll be able to see it without this particular group number. We'll delete this column only without the associated groups. We need to retain the group, save it, and build and run. For our final set of tests, we build and stop this particular debugger and run it and be able to see if we have a set where um, the group is well defined and uh, preview. So we have this as the first, the second, the third, fourth, fifth. So you see we have encapsulated or hidden the detail about the number that is making this report display in this way, but the integer data type we are okay, we are all definitely using it behind the scenes, but it's a very good virtual table, and that's one use case of a way in which you can be able to use this particular integer data type. Even if you need a range of numbers, uh, to generate maybe a range of numbers, you can use the integer data type to loop through numbers set a filter, loop through it. The other one is the date, um, the date uh, data type. Okay, the date virtual table, why am I calling it data type? The date virtual table is the other one that can be used to also uh, loop through records and with the period start and the period end, it really gives you a good way of displaying your reports or pages in the system, especially the date I've used it maybe for getting reports that require periods like period you can specify the period type to be month and all that maybe we can do it in another video where we maybe filter transactions to a particular month so that's it for this video i will see you in the next video if you enjoyed this video make sure to like subscribe and ring the notification bell so that you don't miss the next one